Howdy everyone and welcome to the Serial Geek TV YouTube channel. My name is James Etock and today I present to you 50 things about Optimus Prime. So without any further ado, let us begin. Prior to his life as Autobot leader, Optimus Prime was originally known as Orion Pax. He had a girlfriend named Ariel and a best friend named Dion. Brutally, both Orion and Ariel were killed by the Decepticons. Fortunately for them, Alpha Trion rebuilt the pair, Orion becoming Optimus Prime and Ariel becoming Alita One. An image that you could never unsee was illustrated by the late, great Earl Norum, known more for his work on Masters of the Universe. In this eye-catching piece of art, we see Optimus Prime with a mouth. Optimus Prime was now famously voiced by Peter Cullen who, aside from voicing numerous characters across many cartoons, also voiced Eddie Spencer in Filmation's Ghostbusters. Great! I'm ready to take anything those ghosts dish up! Yes, that is the same voice actor. Marvel Comics writer and editor Denny O'Neill, the man who arguably returned Batman to his Golden Age roots in the 1970s, named Optimus Prime. For a number of issues of the Transformers comic, a captive of Shockwave, Optimus Prime was nothing more than a head without a body. Due to the UK Transformers comic being published weekly and reprinting a single US issue over many weeks, this meant that we in the UK saw nothing but a bodiless Optimus Prime for 17 issues. When it comes to insults, the Autobot commander is a tad uncreative. Fat sets, fathead! Although arguably the star of the first two seasons, Optimus Prime surprisingly does not appear in four episodes of season two. A Decepticon raider in King Arthur's court, Autobop, Hoist Goes Hollywood, and Trans Europe Express. Starscream actor Chris Latter voiced Optimus Prime during the recording session for the episode Countdown to Extinction. This was due to Peter Cullen not being available for the session and having to record his lines another day. Stand clear! Gladly. I hate standing at ground zero when an explosion is imminent. Or hadn't you noticed that your possession is in an unstable condition? Optimus Prime proved to be such a notable character, even in his earliest days, that Pepsi promoted their brand on his trailer. In recent years, this, of course, has gone on to become an independent character known as Pepsi Convoy, and I must say that his artwork looks rather spiffy. Side note, this channel is not sponsored by Pepsi. A rather infamous continuity error occurs in the episode The Return of Optimus Prime Part 1. In his previous appearance, Dark Awakening, we saw Optimus Prime in pretty bad shape. Actually, he was pretty much held together with superglue. However, when we see the same scene in The Return of Optimus Prime Part 1, he looks as impressive as his character model sheet, which is even stranger as the script itself referred to the damage he had previously sustained. Optimus Prime does have a little bit of a temper, as poor old Sideswipe found out. Give me your rocket pack. My rocket pack? Now! Uh, yeah, right. To date, there have been well over 100 Transformers related toys bearing the name Optimus Prime. And speaking of toys, quite possibly one of the worst Transformer toys ever produced saw Optimus Prime repurposed as a different robot altogether. Seriously, the image you're looking at now is not Optimus Prime. This is Sure Shot. Okay. Shohei Kahara was the first artist to bring Optimus Prime into the realm of animation with his initial character model. Marvel Productions artist Flo Roderi simplified Kahara's work, reducing the amount of detail and somewhat more complicated design aspects, leading to the version we saw in the commercial and a slightly more simplified one in the animated series. The question is always asked, where does Optimus Prime's trailer go when he transforms? Simple, it goes to the same place as the Sword of Power when Prince Adam sheathes it. 
when Korean studio Acom animated episodes, due to their notorious use of pre-final colour schemes, they would mistakenly paint Optimus Prime's back grey. Not that that should be the first clue that you're watching an Acom episode. An interesting European variant of the original Optimus Prime toy exists, with the Autobot Commander sporting red feet. Optimus Prime always showed humility and was never above admitting his mistakes, like the time he wanted the Dinobots deactivated. After the dim-witted dinos saved the day, Optimus quickly changed his tune. Sometimes even the wisest of men and machines can be in error. The Dinobots shall remain among us. After the three-part finale, The Rebirth, Optimus Prime would go on to hang out with Tommy Kennedy on a post-apocalyptic world, retelling and showcasing episodes from the previous seasons as well as the movie, after which he'd take young Tommy into outer space. I'm referring, of course, to the semi-lost season five that's never seen release in any form of media. In the Marvel comic book, Optimus Prime's Cybertronian mode was shown to be that of a combat vehicle. The Autobot Commander once died due to the result of him losing a video game. Even as a kid I remember thinking that this was an incredibly underwhelming death, though as a kid I probably described it as rubbish. A strikingly glaring colour error occurs in the episode SOS Dinobots, in which we see Optimus Prime sporting an all blue colour scheme, although it is easy to correct, see? Optimus Prime doesn't always have a plan. Okay Optimus, what's the plan? I have no plan. Famously, children of the 1980s did not take well to the death of Optimus Prime in the movie. That actually may be an understatement. Hasbro, whose edict it was to kill off the character, was shocked. Those that worked on the cartoon were probably less shocked knowing that they'd created a well-rounded character and not just a toy commercial. Even after the series had ended, Peter Cullen continued to voice Optimus Prime in the commercials. Who will join me? Who will give up the power to transform to become stronger, faster, more alive? Optimus Prime became strangely addicted to basketball in the episode The Master Builders. Due to the first few episodes being produced by a number of animation teams under Toei Doga, Prime's appearance goes through some notable changes. Optimus Prime's energy axe, which was pretty much designed for the famous battle with Megatron at Sherman Dam, has gone on to become a much associated toy accessory. Prior to the introduction of the Matrix of Leadership in the animated movie, there is no reference to it when Optimus Prime is close to death and has his chest operated on by Ratchet and Wheeljack in the episode Divide and Conquer. Optimus Prime's epic battle with Megatron in the animated movie was staged to perfection by Peter Chung, who would go on to storyboard the introduction sequence to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Cot, and most famously, create Aeon Flux. Speaking of Peter Chung, he storyboarded an unused bumper for season two, which was to see Optimus Prime and Megatron clash in a rather spectacular way. In some media, it has been stated that Ultra Magnus is Optimus Prime's brother. This, of course, primarily stems from the fact that the pair share the same toy. Me, I prefer to think of Ultra Magnus as he appears in the cartoon. In one of the earliest pieces of promotional artwork by Marvel Productions, when the Transformers cartoon was still being developed, we see a human inside the Autobot Commander manning the steering wheel. A model sheet for Power Master Optimus Prime was created based on his toy, but this version of Optimus only appeared after the series in a handful of commercials and comic books. In the very first draft of Transformers the movie, Unicron is destroyed by unleashing the spirit of Optimus Prime. Ooh. In issue two of the Marvel comic, artist Frank Springer originally drew Prime's trailer with the Diaclone logo on the side of it. Optimus Prime makes good on his threats, like the time he threatened big game hunter Chumley in the episode Prime Target, then strapped Chumley to the villain's stolen Russian jet, and then delivered him to Russia. 
Surprisingly to some, Optimus Prime is not the first Autobot to speak in the cartoon. He's not even the second. After Bumblebee and Wheeljack have their encounter with the Decepticons, Optimus Prime addresses his allies, making him the third Autobot to speak. In the Japanese exclusive cartoon Transformers Super God Master Force, Power Master Optimus Prime shows up. Kind of. The character of Jinrai is not technically Optimus Prime, which is explained, again, kind of. A rarely seen piece of artwork by one of the astounding Japanese artists at Studio Ox depicts a cross-section of Optimus Prime's internal mechanics. In the episode Five Faces of Darkness Part 2, a dying Rodimus Prime states, My time in the light is short. RC immediately remarks that these were also the dying words of Optimus Prime. Now, those of you that know the movie may be thinking, hey, she got them wrong. And she did. Arcee's dialogue actually refers to an earlier draft of the movie in which Optimus Prime did indeed utter that line. Although Prime's trailer had a tendency to disappear, there were times that it was used in the series, most notably in parts 2 and 3 of More Than Meets the Eye, Fire in the Sky, Attack of the Autobots, The Autobot Run, and The Search for Alpha Trion. It's fair to say that Optimus Prime kept the Autobots from going extinct. Well, should we credit that to Starscream? Or even Teletran 1? A very early animation model was based on the Diaclone prototype for his initial figure. This version can actually be seen on the cover of the very first US produced Marvel comic. Optimus Prime is briefly reactivated in the Beast Wars show from the 90s. For a time, I was a small part of the Transformers community. I used to sell my UK comics to my fellow fans. And I still recall the joy people had when the Ark and its deactivated inhabitants were shown in the episode The Agenda Part 3. People lost their sh**. Simon Furman was always going to resurrect Optimus Prime after his death in issue 76 of the Marvel comic. However, he was prompted to do so far sooner than he had planned to with the sudden cancellation of the comic. Thus, Optimus Prime returns again four issues after his death in order to wrap up the saga of the Transformers. One of my favourite oddities occurs in the Japanese exclusive Headmasters cartoon. Due to Japan not receiving the movie until 1989, details of how Optimus Prime died in the movie were kept oddly ambiguous. Thus the Autobot commander receives a comically short death during a flashback at the start of the first episode of the series, Four Warriors Come Out of the Sky. Optimus Prime uses Megatron in gun mode twice in the series. In the episodes Countdown to Extinction, and the Insecticon Syndrome, and it always made for a rather awesome visual. On the cover of Serial Geek issue 9, artist Makoto Ono illustrated Optimus Prime, as seen in the Marvel Productions cartoon, meeting the slightly more detailed and stylized Optimus Prime as depicted by the artists of Studio Ox. Yeah, I know I'm slightly cheating with that fact, but eh. And finally, it's fair to say that Optimus Prime attacking the Decepticons in Transformers the Movie is one of the most pulse-pounding scenes in any animated movie or TV show of the 80s. Yeah, look at him go! And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, share and subscribe.